What's going on, everybody? It's October 20th, 2022. Daily log episode number 34. Today, we're going to cover what happened in the Telegram. I called that a trade and ended up being a loss today. And I believe there was a lot of lessons that could have been learned, especially for those who are new, who haven't experienced many losses yet. Or even me, I mean, the last three or four weeks here, I think I've had one loss and two counting this one. So it's been very, very smooth sailing for the last few weeks. And it's funny to take a loss. I mean, I actually didn't take it on my account that I trade because I said yesterday I met my weekly profit goal. I even shared it in the Telegram. I didn't take any trades on that account, but I called out a trade and it ended up being in a loss. And there was a few reasons to that. And I mentioned even in the morning log, the daily time frame really suggests that we're in low probability. And especially with no news drivers this week, I believe this week is really just setting up next week where I believe we have a good amount of news drivers, which will hopefully get us out of this dealing range and out of uncertainty and just kind of a clear one-sided draw on liquidity. So looking at the daily time frame, today it was just back and forth. It was like a seek and destroy day. And I was saying to pay attention to this volume of balance here, the order block as well. I thought possibly we could have headed higher. I was looking to short to take out the lows. And if you take your fib from swing high to swing low, we're now resting basically at equilibrium of the dealing range. And we've been inside of this for a couple of weeks now. And especially if you're at equilibrium of the daily dealing range, four hour, one hour, 30 minute, et cetera. This can be applied to all time frames, but most importantly, higher time frames. If you're stuck inside of a dealing range, it creates low probability because it creates consolidation. It creates seek and destroy profiles and it's just the low probability. So what we could learn from this today is either A, you can find this when you're trading in the middle of an equilibrium, you can elect not to trade. Or you can have the understanding that you should lower your risk and lower your expectations and probably expect a loss. And honestly, that's what I was expecting today. I I like the model. Everything was there. The rules were there. And that's what should be observed is, A, we executed on the rules that were given to us. To me, there was nothing clear to go long today on that. So that even makes it more clear for me. And... The, the wins from Monday and Wednesday should have already covered it if you took them, you know, with me. So let's go into the four hour time frame. If we reel it back here. This was basically New York session, pre New York. And this is how it looked for me. I thought that we could trade down underneath the sell side liquidity resting at 36.66 and trade into this fair value gap coupled with the balanced price range. That was my narrative coming into the morning. I didn't see a reason for us to trade higher. If you look at even the one hour time frame, so we had the sell side liquidity resting here. We had the market structure shift underneath this low. And then overnight, we were just kind of running out buy stops. And coming into the New York session, I had the 30-minute for value gap marked up. That was a draw on liquidity underneath the lows. I saw that we already ran out buy stops. If you go down to a 15-minute time frame or even a 5-minute time frame, we ran out the buy stops again. And then I was looking at midnight open. So to me, running the buy stops once and then twice coming into New York session, my belief was we set the high of the day, we ran out the buy stops, we displaced lower, we had a potential bearish order block, we had a bearish breaker, all these down close candles, and then we had the fair value gap, which was inside of a premium. Those are amazing confirmations 
when you're in alignment with the narrative and understanding when the trade, the model should be high probability, which is time, news drivers, time of the week, and understanding the dealing range on a daily time frame. So those things were against us. We had no news drivers. We we're in the EQ, the daily range. And all week, we've just kind of been consolidating. Even if you looked at the one hour time frame, we were just trading overnight pretty sloppy into New York session. So it uh, doesn't surprise me that we took a loss today. If we fast forward, actually, I wanted to mention a couple more things. Even the 15 minute time frame, this bearish order block coupled with the Fair Valley Gap was pretty nice. I highlighted that 30 minute, same thing. So there was a lot of confirmations. After we took the loss, price displaced higher, and then we ultimately got underneath the south side liquidity that was resting underneath these, underneath these lows here. And I believe we got into this Fair Valley Gap as well. So we were just off by a little bit. And over time, you will realize as long as you followed your rules, followed your discipline, over time, your money management and your risk management to reward will overtake any losses over a long term. So I talked about with money management, after today's loss, you should lower your leverage to, let's say you're doing 1%, you lower it to 0.5% until you make back 50% of the loss that occurred. And once you gain that, then you can go back to your 1% leverage. And let's say you take a loss on that. Okay, you just move back down to 0.5%, make back half the loss again. And if you keep doing that, that stops the bleeding and it helps your equity curve not have huge you know, spikes and dips. It's just a nice smooth uptrend. So that's what I would recommend. Um, going into tomorrow, I really have no bias. I'm probably going to take the day off, to be honest with you. I'm quite exhausted from the week. Looking at the weekly time frame, I mentioned this yesterday. We came up into this fair value gap once again, so we're reclaimed fair, fair value gap. The daily time frame, I just don't know. <laughs> like that's just me looking at it when I don't know, and especially I remember ICT said this a lot throughout the last year. He's like, "There's going to be times when I don't know," and I'm telling you guys, I don't know. The only thing I can note as well is the US 100 made the higher, uh, lower high here, and then US 30 made the higher high right there. And US 500 made, made the lower high. So that's a bearish SMT divergence. It could be signaling lower prices, but I could honestly see both ways. We'll just have to see how uh, tomorrow plays out but I'm probably not going to be trading. I'll uh, maybe update in the morning some of my thoughts, but nothing too major. And with that being said, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow morning. Good luck and good trading.